So I get the question of doing paginations inside of Excelsius a lot from whether it be um, when I'm doing a dashboard for myself or from people that I know that are doing dashboards. And up until now it's been very difficult, but now that as part of Service Pack 3, SAP has provided the push button um, control, it's made things a lot easier for for pagination. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've done pagination, uh, show you the logic, and then let you download this file so you can play with it if you want. Um, so if you notice, uh, down in my spreadsheet I have a lot of data and some some text over here to the right that I use for logic, and I'll explain the logic. And then up in my canvas I have my actual table with my previous and next buttons, um, as well as I have a spreadsheet control that's mapped to my control data just so I can show you what's happening as we press the button so we don't have to export to Excel and see what that data looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and preview and when I preview this I'm gonna show you the pagination so again this over here is just to show you what's happening in my control data this is the table that I actually want to paginate so what I'll do is let me undo this again and just show you so here's my data assume this is your data that came in from a web service so in Excelsius you always have to decide what's the maximum amount of data that I'm going to receive so what I've done here is I've said well the maximum data I'm gonna receive is 20 rows so notice I have a total of 20 a minimum of one so you gotta have at least one and then this max here is a formula that's actually counting all of the, the cells in this row that actually have data and then the size is again is hard coded so I'm saying I want five units per page so now again here's my data so it's just A through T so let me preview okay so now when I hit next I should see G F G H I J there we go and I notice that my previous button has now shown up next again next again now my next button goes away because I'm out of data previous 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 button goes away so now notice over here you'll see my data changing and that's my control data so let's unpreview and let's look at it okay so this column here is all just hard-coded one two three four five and then I have this cell here is a formula so this cell D1 is mapped to C1, so it's mapped to this cell, plus the value of G1, which is the current low end of the range, minus 1. So basically, I've got 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 1. And as you go down, you'll notice that it maps again to C2, C3, C4, C5. So this basically gives me those values, which then I can do a VLOOKUP on. Do a VLOOKUP on the value in D1 in the range of A1 through B20, looking at column 2 and false. And notice as I go down, it does D2, D3, D4, D5. So that's how I populate these five rows based on uh, the data using a VLOOKUP. So now to create the previous and next button functionality what I have is I have this next and previous fields here. So if I start with previous, previous is going to say I'm I7, so I7 right now is 1, okay, minus 1. And next is I7 plus 1. So basically I'm trying to create a just a count one two three four five six seven every time I hit the next button or the previous button I want to count up by one or count down by one and then below these two values I have two more cells uh, this one here which is which is G8 plus E10 so G8 is one and E10 is five so the size of my page plus one which gives me six however G8 is I7 I7 which is one times E10 E10 
which is 5. So you have 5 minus e10 minus 1. So again, e10 is 5 minus 1 is 4. OK, so you have 4 and i7 1 times e10 is 5. So you have 5 minus 4, which is 1. And that gives you these here. So as this number increments, so I'm just going to go ahead and just type the number 2. Notice my range increases. 3, my range increases. I'll put it back to 1. So the key, though, to get this to work is I have these push buttons. So the next push button, what it does is it takes its source data when it's pressed and puts it in its destination, which is right there. So when I hit next, it puts that value right there. And then my previous takes its value and puts it in the same cell. So that's how I count up and I count down. So I know that if my value is 1 and I count down, my value should be 0. And if I count up, my value should be 2. And then based on that number, these two numbers change, as we just talked about. And then I have these here just map to these two, which it's just a copy of the data. And then whether or not I show the next or the previous is just visibility, dynamic visibility on these numbers based on these two cells. So I know that's complicated. That's why I'm going to give you the file to download, and you'll be able to look at it and play with it. However, it does, it does work. And you don't have to just do one column of data. However, that's what I'm doing for this example. Uh, notice, so if I get rid of this data, uh, my pagination still works. It stops after the third set. So I'm on set one, set two, set three, and now the button uh, disappears. So that's uh, how you can do some simple pagination inside of Excelsius.